understand hydronephrosis, it's necessary to have a little knowledge of the anatomy of a kidney. This is my rather primitive sketch of a normal kidney that produces urine and the urine drains into the calyces and here are the calyces and the calyces widen into the renal pelvis that the urine drains into and then the urine passes down the ureter into the bladder and then out of the urethra Hydronephrosis is distension of the renal pelvis and calyces of the kidney with urine as a result of urine outflow obstruction. The obstruction can occur anywhere from the renal pelvis to the urethral meatus. And the urethral meatus is the very end of the urethra. Hydronephrosis may arise at any age and it may also occur antenatally, that means before birth. And this is hydronephrosis with dilatation of the calyces and renal pelvis, resulting in thinning of the surrounding renal parenchyma. And just for comparison, here is the normal kidney again. If hydronephrosis arises before birth or in children, the cause is often congenital. And congenital causes include posterior urethral valves, urethral and meatal strictures, pelvi-ureteric or PUJ obstruction, vesico-ureteral reflux, that means reflux of urine from the bladder into the ureters. Some cases are hereditary and some cases there may be no obvious cause. In this case it is called idiopathic. Hydronephrosis in adults is usually acquired and common causes include calculi, that's stones, BPH, that's benign prostatic hyperplasia, where the prostate becomes enlarged and causes the urethra to become squeezed, allowing urine to back up into the ureters and into the kidneys. Pregnancy can cause transient hydronephrosis and after birth the hydronephrosis you should resolve prolapse of the uterus, tumours, especially transitional cell carcinomas that may arise anywhere from the renal calyces down to the urethra, but more commonly in the bladder. So transitional cell carcinomas arise inside the ureters, renal pelvis, calyces and bladder, but other tumours may arise outside and squeeze the ureters, for example, carcinoma of the cervix. And this can cause obstruction resulting in hydronephrosis. Neurogenic bladder where the bladder doesn't work properly because the nerves supplying it are damaged and blood clots can cause blockages resulting in hydronephrosis. Some more unusual causes of hydronephrosis include endometriosis. Amyloid can be deposited in a ureter resulting in obstruction. Retroperitoneal fibrosis where there is scarring in the tissues around the kidneys and ureters can result in hydronephrosis and sometimes the renal papillae may slough or fall off in cases of renal papillary necrosis and cause a blockage resulting in hydronephrosis. This is a rare condition that could potentially cause hydronephrosis and this is a deposit of amyloid, that's a red staining material, in the ureter. Hydronephrosis may present in a number of ways. It may be asymptomatic or it may be incidentally found on imaging such as ultrasound, MRI or CT. Or it may present in a number of ways such as pain in the back or side. The symptoms of the cause of hydronephrosis may manifest themselves, nausea and vomiting, blood in the urine, and urine may be passed less frequently because of hydronephrosis. Complications of hydronephrosis include urinary tract infection, there may be 
permanent kidney damage if the hydronephrosis is left untreated for too long and the kidney may fail as a result of thinning of the cortex and medulla and scarring with loss of glomeruli. Importantly, however, if hydronephrosis is promptly treated or resolves quickly, there may be no renal damage and no complications. Treatment of hydronephrosis depends on the underlying cause and the site of the obstruction. So the hydronephrosis may disappear with resolution of the underlying cause or the appropriate treatment of the underlying cause. For example, successful treatment of prolapse. Sometimes, however, it is necessary to use a catheter or a ureteric stent to allow the urinary outflow obstruction to be relieved. In more serious cases of hydronephrosis, a nephrostomy may be required where a tube is inserted directly into the renal pelvis, allowing the urine to flow through a tube into a bag on the outside of the body. Here are some examples of hydronephrosis. This is hydronephrosis caused by benign prostatic hyperplasia or BPH where the prostate has become so enlarged that it is obstructing outflow of urine from the bladder, causing the urine to back up through the ureters into the kidneys, resulting in the ureters to become dilated. This is called hydroureter, and then the renal pelvis and calyces also become dilated, and this is hydronephrosis. Here there is a tumour in the distal ureter. This is a transitional cell carcinoma and it is causing complete obstruction of urinary outflow. Distal, by the way, is the part of the ureter furthest away from the kidney. And this has caused hydronephrosis with very marked dilatation of the calyces and renal pelvis. And here is hydronephrosis caused by transitional cell carcinoma of the renal pelvis. And that is the solid white area we are zooming into.